At this point, I think I've made videos on just about every important Linux shell utility. We have so many fantastic command line utilities that allow you to do magical things on your Linux system. Really fantastic commands such as grip, sed, awk, which I've done videos on all those commands before. But today, I wanted to cover a few moderately useful shell utilities. These are commands that honestly, I don't use all that often. Many of you guys probably don't use all that often. It's possible many of you have never even heard of some of these commands. So let me go to the terminal. The very first command I wanna talk about is dir, which is your directory listing command. Now on Linux and all Unix-like operating systems, obviously we have the ls command. The ls command lists the contents of a directory. It lists all the files and directory within that directory. But on Windows, if you've ever used the Windows command line, they use dir instead. And for some reason, a part of the GNU core utils, we have ls, the standard ls command that everybody uses, but they also have dir as well. Why do we have basically two commands that do very similar things? Some people suggest it is to be compatible with people that are used to the dir command on Windows. I don't know if that's necessarily true. There's some debate on that. Obviously, these commands are slightly different. Essentially, dir is actually the same thing as if you did a ls dash c b a capital c lowercase b if i ran this command uh well my ls command is a list so let me prepend it with command ls dash capital c lowercase b and you can see that looks exactly like the dir command essentially dir is the standard ls command like your standard ls listing command and now if you wanted it in long form listing the way you would get something like ls dash l for example get the long form listing instead of dir you would use v dir so there is that command which is the long form listing of the ls command essentially v dir is the same as ls dash lb so long form listing here and of course again my ls is alias so let me command ls dash lb you can see we get that output the dir is the exact same output now even though both dir and vdir are standard gnu core util commands i have never in my life used these commands other than what I'm demonstrating on this video. Why would you use DIR when you have LS? And LS has a million different flags to it. It's just a much more powerful command. So even though DIR and VDIR exist, you're probably, if you're running Linux or any Unix-like operating system, such as any of the various Unix flavors, the BSD operating systems, even something like Mac OS, you're probably going to use the LS command. Uh, you're gonna prefer it much more so than the DIR command. And and by the way, while we're on the subject, uh, in one, my ls command obviously is an alias, right? It's not actually running the ls command. This is actually alias to a program called EZA. So EZA has some fancy coloring and formatting. So my ls command is actually EZA with some flags and options. If I wanted to see what my ls command is, I could do type ls and your shell, in my case, the fish shell, but this also works in bash and ZSH. All of them have a built-in called type, and it will give you your alias. So if you type and then the name of the command, it will tell you if that command is aliased. If it is aliased, it will tell you what it is aliased to. And you can see, in my case, I've got ls alias to easy a dash al dash dash you know a bunch of other flags so every shell has that type built in every shell also has the command built in which you already saw me use so for example if i command ls that will be the standard ls command because if i just do ls by itself my ls again is alias to eza so if i want to run the true ls command not the alias version i either have to do command ls or i could just type the full path to the binary such as user bin ls and unlike dir and the vdir commands which i've never used i actually do use the command uh, built in in the shell all the time the type command i don't use that often but type is it does have some interesting functionality. For example, if I wanted to type echo, I can see echo is a built-in shell command, right? But if I wanted to type 
Firefox, for example, it's going to say Firefox is a binary. It's going to give me the location to the binary. If you want to specifically get the location to the binary for something, for example, like this ls command, if I didn't know where that binary existed on the system, type dash a name of program will give you, well, in my case, it returns both the alias, but it also gives you ls is at user bin ls. It gives you the location to the binary. If you want to get the specific type of a program, you could type and then dash T and you could do ls. You know, what type of program is ls? Well, in this case, ls is a function. If I up arrow and do type dash T echo, you can see echo is actually a shell built in. The next thing I want to talk about is the nl command. So nl is a line number command. We think of it as numbered lines. So nl, it's a GNU core util. It's not something you use all that often because most of your other GNU core utils, things like grep and sed and cat and head, they have ways of actually adding line numbers to their output anyway. So it's not like you really need the nl command all that often. But when you need it, it is very useful and you can just give it a path to a file. For example, if I did NL and then the path to my dot bash RC file, you can see it prints my bash RC to standard output and it adds line numbers before every line. And obviously you could you know, run some kind of command, you know, imagine some command that prints some output to the terminal and then you could pipe it into NL and then NL would add the line numbers to the output as well. Now I've mentioned that most of the other GNU core utils already have flags for adding line numbers. For example, grep has dash N for line numbers and if I wanted to, grip uh how about we grip for alias in my dot bash rc because there's a whole bunch of lines in my bash rc that have the string alias if i grip for that you can see grip will add line numbers but here's the thing the way grip adds line numbers it actually gives me the actual line number in the file now what nl would do if i pipe this into nl nl numbers them consecutively you know one to in this case 57 so the 57 lines of output it just numbers them 1 through 57 so these are not the actual line numbers themselves within the file the line number within the file was actually 258 and this again this is part of what grip was assigning line numbers and the nl command is one of those commands i probably use maybe two or three times a year right i'll find a situation where i need to add line numbers to some output and you know for whatever reason you know i'm using things that either don't have a line number kind of flag or whatever it happens to be and then piping the whole thing into something like nl makes a lot of sense the next command that i almost never use is the id command the id command is another good new core util and if i hit enter on that just id with no other flags or options you can see it gives me my user id ID. My username is DT. His user ID is 1000. His group ID is 1000. All the groups he belongs to. So D the DT user on this system belongs to Sys, Network Scanner, Power, Olama, Libver, yada, yada, yada. Of course, somewhere he's in the wheel group. So I have sudo privileges. And then it gives me the ID numbers for each of the groups. The wheel group, for example, here is 998. That's the group ID for wheel. So to be fair, you know, what this command does is really interesting. The reason I never use it is because there's so many other shell commands to get the same information. You know, I often just forget that this ID command even exists. If I do ID dash U for user, it's going to give me my user's user ID. So 1000 is the ID number for the DT user, which is what I'm currently logging in. If I wanted to specify an actual user, I could do uh, ID DT or ID. Let's do a different user, the root user. ID root, you can see root's ID is zero. Earlier when I did ID dash U to get my user ID, which is a thousand, if instead of the user ID, I wanted the username, I could do dash you in for the actual name of my user, which is DT. So the ID command is really quite useful. And I, again, I never use it because, you know, typically like if I want to get my username, I could just echo dollar sign user in this particular shell variable here and get my user. That's typically how I get my user. If I wanted my user ID, I could echo UID, for example, or whatever it happens to be. So again, you know, it, it gives you a lot of really neat information. But again, there's several other ways to get that same information. The final command I want to talk about today is one that I think is more than moderate
moderately useful. I actually use this command not all the time, but it is a very useful command. You know, this is the calendar command, cal. Oftentimes I'm working in a terminal, whether I'm in a terminal emulator or if I'm in a TTY, whatever it happens to be, and I need to quickly look up something in a calendar. I want to find a date in a calendar. And the quickest way to do this is simply type cal. Now what cal does without any other flags or options, it gives you this month's calendar and you can see it highlights today's date. If you want to look at a three month calendar, do cal-3 and what it does, it gives you this month's calendar as well, but it also gives you the previous month's calendar and next month's calendar. Some other flags that are useful, I often do cal-y for year and what this does, it gives you the entire year. Let me zoom out so you can actually see the entire year's calendar. So this is the calendar for 2024. Now if for some reason you didn't want to view the calendar for this year, 2024, you wanted a different year, you could do something like calendar 2023 and get the, the 2023 calendar or next year's calendar 2025. And finally, if you want a 12 month calendar, but not January to December, you want a 12 month calendar from this month going forward 12 months, you could do cal dash dash 12. And you can see we're in July 2024, and then I get the next 12 months after that as part of a year calendar. So there you have it, seven moderately useful shell commands. We talked about dear v dear, uh, shell built-ins like command and type, as well as NLID and the calendar command. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt James, Steve, Ormer Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Ur, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Rolling Soul Last Street, Tenor, and Warchin Two, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at these shell utilities, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you like my work and want to see more videos on fantastic shell utilities, for example, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.